G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday morning here in Australia, so obviously sort of, you know, Monday night I guess over in the States and it looks like there's been uh, a little bit more of a pump up from the market, so Bitcoin is now above 40,000. So things are looking pretty good at the moment, but we're not quite out of the woods just yet. Uh, and we'll have a look at that very shortly. But Bitcoin dominance, 43.8%, so rising. I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see this get up to sort of 50, maybe even sort of 60% again, particularly if Bitcoin gets on a run. ETH dominance still holding in there around 17.3%. Uh, and now we can see gas prices have jumped up straight away. They've basically doubled. They were at sort of 7, 8 the other day, and so now they're at 14 and that is because there's a bit of exuberance in the market. So start, people are starting to uh, deploy their money, which is, you know, a lot of it's probably been in stable coins. And now they're starting to uh, get into, well, Bitcoin uh, number one, but also some of the alts as well. So, all right, let's have a look. What's done well in the last 24 hours in the top 100? We can see Bitcoin's done all right. And so has Ethereum. So that's really, really good. All right, AMP. 28% nice, and I mean up nearly 70% for uh, seven days, so pretty good. Uh, Polkadot, we got some news about why Polkadot might be pumping. Up 16%. Thorchain, Synthetics Network, nice, making a bit of a comeback. So 9% uh, there. I am still super bullish. I really like Synthetics Network, and I am going to do uh, a vlog on Synthetics Network as I rang an I read an article the other day that made me, again, even more bullish. Engine, nice. Uh, Huobi, Nano, Safe Moon, good. Again, I haven't looked into it, but just from what I've heard, I'm truly worried about it. Cosmos, Phantom, Sushi, Polygon, nice, even better. Back to $1.54. Uh, Clayton, don't know about a whole stack about that. So look, some really good gains there. Well, again, over the 15% for me, but still, any gain's a good gain, and it has moved the market 2.4%. All right, has anything not done so well in the last 24 hours? Has anything been kind of knocked around? Leo token, pirate chain, theta fuel down a little bit, but again, now it's back up in the last hour, so we'll wait and see, but 20% for a week's pretty good. Uh, look, hardly any losses there, really, you know, other than really Leo token and uh, pirate chain. Yeah, pretty much nothing, really. Uh, well, I mean, Nexo is still down a little bit and they've been hammered for the week. But again, 1.3% in 24 hours, not so much. So again, up 2.4% overall. Things, 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 <laughs> things are looking promising at the moment, but we're not out of the woods just yet. So let's not, you know, go into full celebration mode. Let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Right, so as we can see, this is that upward trend. And I said we've flirted with the bottom, we've dropped out, and then we jumped back out. And then we even just kind of dipped out this time, uh, and we've jumped straight back into it. But again, this is the level I'm watching for. Should we go below sort of 27,000, let's just round that off and say 20, 27,700, uh, I will be concerned. Uh, that would definitely be uh, my idea of we're probably in a... Yeah, probably a bear market, but you know, not necessarily a bear market. Again, if it just wicks down uh, and you know, you get a quick V shaped recovery, particularly if it only gets down to 24 sort of thousand and then just goes straight back up, then definitely not a bear market. That's just a bearish trend. But we can see it is starting to get higher and higher. Now, this is really the mark that we need to get above. So, I'll probably move that a little bit too early. We need to kind of break this. So, it's roughly 42,000 ish thereabouts. If we get a legitimate close above there, then that's pretty good. But what we could do is definitely get a fake out. So it doesn't close above it, it just goes above it, and then we break back down and sort of start to come back in here. And I guess, and again, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we just travel sideways within here. We may even break down, but I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. So again, watching for this to be broken uh, would be a bit bearish. Again, it depends on what happens after it and looking to get a basically above the $42,000 level and close. And what wouldn't surprise me is if we get above it, but then we have to come back down and retest it. So it's not simply getting above it. We really need to make sure we close above it and sort of stay above it. If we, you know, get above it and then come back down, then, you know, again, doesn't mean we're still not bullish, but we're not in super bull mode anyway. All right, moving on, some interesting stories. So micro strategy may sell $1 billion in stock to buy more Bitcoin. 
Now, again, he put out a thing a while ago selling master A-class uh, stocks, I think, uh, something like that, or nodes. I forget what, exactly what they're called. Uh, he was only looking for $500 million. He had $1.6 billion in interest. So people were, you know, there was $1.6 billion worth of money being put at him. So he may end up selling that and buying more Bitcoin. It'd be very, very interesting to see. Oh, another billion dollars worth. Now, look, he hasn't come out and openly said that he's going to buy that, but he's basically been putting all their sort of spare cash into Bitcoin. Now, he already owns $92,000. Uh, sorry, not, 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 excuse me, not $92,000, 92,000 Bitcoin. So that's $3.7 billion, And he really is, I think he's looking to crack that kind of 100,000 uh, Bitcoins which would be very, very interesting. Now, it did go on to say down below that he bought his initial lot of Bitcoins at an average price of $11,653. Uh, and he has seen the volatility go as high as basically sort of 64000 and come down to 33000 and now it's sitting around 40000 But that is still basically, not quite, a little bit less, but a 4X. He's 4 x his money in a year. There's not too many other places you're going to be able to do that. Uh, and that's on the initial purchase. Don't get me wrong. He's bought other Bitcoin that haven't done as well. But generally, he's still doing pretty well with his Bitcoin uh, acquisition. And what you need to think of is if you were lucky enough and you bought Bitcoin under $11,000, then you're even ahead of him. You're, you know, yeah, I suppose you could probably say you might be considered a smarter investor than him because you got in earlier. Now, this is just what MicroStrategy holds. Him personally... He may have been into Bitcoin for uh, a little while longer than that. All right, Algorand. Seems they are starting to pick up some pace and getting institutional uh, investment going in. So backing from uh, institutional investors and a series of new partnerships could help Algo break from its current range in the coming week. Week? Yep. Not weeks. All right. In the last month, the Algorand Network announced that Arlington, Ar Arrington Capital, sorry, a digital asset manager, had pledged a hundred million in funding meant to help accelerate additional development across all uh, facets of the smart contract platform. Hundred million? That's a fair few dollars. This development came on the heels of the June 2 announcement that Borderless Capital, a virtual, sorry, a venture capital firm, had created a $25 million fund aimed at supporting Miami-based blockchain startups, developing digital payment solutions on the Algorand network. So other recent examples of adoption include a partnership with Bermuda-based, uh, I think that's MAPay or MAPay, I don't know how they say that, healthcare payment solution, which will host its payment solution on our grand blockchain in an effort to improve efficiency and reduce health reduce healthcare costs, as well as a partnership with Xfinity and Eros Now to create a blockchain-based content uh, engagement platform for the 242 million registered users of Eros Now. These new partnerships come after a busy year for the network, which also included the integration of USDC, USD coin, and Tether USDT, the two largest stable coins in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. So I brought you uh, that news quite some time ago. So it seems like Algorand, uh, things are still looking pretty good. They're not really big on their marketing is what I've noticed. You just don't hear a whole lot about them. I mean, you're hearing little bits and pieces like this, and I, I had Algorand, and it was one of uh, the things that I just kind of sold because it had underperformed. I made a profit, but I just wasn't hearing a whole lot about it. And, you know, now we'll wait and see whether I made the right decision. I, I still like Algorand, and the guy behind it, uh, he's quite smart, and he's been in the, you know, kind of digital space for a long time, and specifically around, you know, cryptographic sort of stuff, i.e. cryptocurrencies and things like that. So it'd be interesting to see what he can do with the platform, but I definitely think they need uh, a better marketing department would be my uh, thoughts on that. Uh, proof of uh, stake, really good as well. Uh, I was making some money from that for a while there. All right, Bitcoin remittances over in El Salvador have jumped. So the monthly transfers of under $1,000 to El Salvador totaled $1.7 in May, representing more than a 300% increase from $424,000 the previous year. So El Salvadorians getting right on the bandwagon for cryptocurrencies. 
but it's not quite as much as what you know some people may think. According to the World Bank, remittances using traditional money totaled nearly six billion in 2019. So, uh, and about 95% of the total remittances in the first quarter of this year came from Salvadorians working in the U.S. So again, you know, the dollar is still the the king. It really does rule. As much as I love, you know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, we are just a small drop in the ocean in the grand scheme of things. But that is why I'm so bullish as well, because it means we've got so much more room to grow. And obviously the price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies will grow with further adoption. But again, shows that even the El Salvadorians, they're right on top of it. They're loving it. They don't have any issues with it. I haven't heard of any real protests or anything going on in El Salvador about this. So good to see. And there's even more news. So a multinational development bank will form a technical advisory group to help El Salvador as it implements a law uh, recognising Bitcoin as uh, legal tender. So the government of El Salvador uh, has resorted to the Central American Bank for Economic Integration or the C-A-B-E-I-E, uh, sorry, E-I, uh, I'm not sure how they pronounce that, Carby maybe, to assist in the process of Bitcoin implementation to the country. Uh, so, you know, even their central bank is getting on board to help them with this. So interesting that at least there's one central bank who's not completely, you know, crypto phobic because a lot of them uh, have definitely, you know, been resistant uh, to cryptocurrencies in general. You know, they're definitely leaning towards their own sort of CBDCs and things like that. But yeah, a reserve bank, uh, not completely against Bitcoin and helping them to implement it but again we'll just have to wait and see whether there's you know some slightly ulterior motives uh, in there but you know hopefully fingers crossed that's exactly what it uh, is that central banks are starting to warm to the idea of cryptocurrencies and what they're about because banks can still make a lot of money off cryptocurrencies uh, over the next sort of few years eventually as people come uh, a little bit more wise to how these work uh, and if they continue to grow and take off banks will become less and less relevant but it will be interesting to see how they build around it or whether this is the start of banks just disappearing completely and you know our banking stuff basically being a smart contract we'll have to wait and see but at least in the sort of short to midterm I, th I think banks are going to play a huge part uh, in cryptocurrencies because that's how the masses will sort of come to it. Other than the millennials, they're probably going to, you know, sort of skip banks almost altogether. Uh, very, very interesting. Anyway, congratulations to the president of El Salvador uh, and the people being the first country to legalize it. And, you know, hopefully we see many more countries do the same, but it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, it really will be the smaller nations that will do it first. Hopefully a few other South American countries get on board and again, I read a tweet about Tonga uh, in the Pacific, uh, one of the Pacific nations there, you know, looking to do the same. Uh, and again, they've got a few volcanoes and things like that over in Tonga and that. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how many of these small nations do it first. And if Bitcoin really takes off and the price goes through the roof and suddenly these little minnow nations become some, you know, economic powers, that's when you're going to see, you know, they their wealth goes through the roof. You know, they 10x their nation's wealth just by using Bitcoin. That's when you're going to see these other big countries go, right, yeah, we've got to do the same and they will then do the same. And again, it'll be interesting to see which of the, you know, the first world nations, like particularly the G7 or even the G20, which of those countries becomes the first big country to adopt Bitcoin? That is what's really going to uh, be very, very interesting, particularly if it ends up, I doubt it will be, but being something like uh, England or America, really. If one of those two adopt it, then it'll just be for a free-for-all because they won't want to be the last, but they just, you know, they don't want to be the first either. All right, last story. So Polkadot starting to make some moves. It's been listed on Coinbase Pro. Now, generally, when you get listed on Coinbase Pro, it's a couple of weeks before you get listed on the traditional one. But it seems the Coinbase pump is still a real thing. So the price of Polkadot has surged 15% immediately after the announcement of the upcoming Coinbase Pro listing. Right, so they're not actually listed. I thought they said they were listed. So, oh yeah, following the pro listing, but waiting for the 
uh, probably normal uh, listing. But let's go and have a look. How is Polkadot doing? Where is Polkadot? Have I gone past them? There we are. Nice. All right. Boom. That is quite a rise right there. Uh, quite steep and still rising at the moment. So again, very, very nice. And hopefully uh, I bought some Polkadot. Uh, not quite at the low. I think I bought it at around sort of $26. Uh, and it'd be good for that to get back uh, in the green. So again, there's been so much fear in the market. We're not out of the woods yet. We can see, look, it's gone up three uh, to 3.3%. So it was 2.5%, so growing. When there's all this fear in the market, again, it is really, really hard to buy. And it was even hard for me to buy, but I just trusted in my instincts that, you know, I believe in this space in general. And even if Bitcoin had a dumped another 50% and all these other altcoins had a dump, you know, maybe another 50% on top of those, I would have still invested. I truly believe in the space. I accept the volatility and it's because I've been around long enough to sort of know, you know, it's four years now I've been in the space. So I've seen some amazing highs and I've seen some truly tragic lows and I didn't panic. I mean, I've panic sold a couple of things, specifically XRP, I told you about that. Uh, and I, re I regret that, but basically I've hardly sold any crypto in the entire time I've been there. I just continue to buy. Uh, and I stopped dollar cost averaging from 2017 until about sort of late 2019 and I truly, oh sorry, late 2020 and I truly regret that. If I had have been continually dollar cost averaging in, I would be in such a better position now, but I've learnt my lesson. And again, I showed that, uh, uh, what is it, dcabtc.com, definitely go and check that site out and it'll show you the difference that a dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin could have made over you know one year, two years, five years, ten years, whatever. Really good site. All right. Anyway, that's it for me. Love to know your thoughts down below. Do you think we are now going to continue up and break that forty-two thousand dollar level, or do you think this is a bit of a fake out and we're still going to see more sideways action? Love to know your thoughts. All right. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that game train at the moment, which is really, really good. And I'll see you next time.